Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Broken by Concept. I'm Coach Curtis. This is Nathan Mott. We we get a lot of clients, right? So we we've seen a lot. Like we we let's say let's say if you were to like literally break down like a gold player, like a platinum player, all this sort of stuff, and and a lot of the problems and issues that you see, you could you could probably like name even like the stereotypes of like you would probably like be able to to categorize like you know how you always get when someone joins the MLA, you like ask them a bunch of questions like they're yep. gaming back on sort of stuff, right? Yep. You already have a pretty good idea of what their problems will be. Very like I can you by can asking like five questions on. and looking at the first few minutes of the gameplay, I basically already know what their learning objective should be, what their journey is going to look like, how fast they're going to improve and what problems they're going to face. And that's just because you've done thousands and thousands yes. of reviews and you've had, you've had, you know, probably 1,500 people in your program over the years. Yeah. Something like more, that. Yeah. So, you've, you know, you've literally talked with like thousands, thousands of people, people right? Yeah. So, um, I had one of my Soul 2, Soul 2 members play a game with Riot Freak. Um, I reviewed this game. Oh, no, I didn't review this game. This is another game. But he was telling me, he mentioned it because he said it was, it was a game that he streamed. The oh, really? Freak was streamed and he was just in the game. And he was like, he was like, oh, like, oh, he told me. It's like, you know, it's funny that Freak was doing a lot of things that he's not really mantras of right. the salt and the VVC okay. philosophy. And I was like, okay, let's have a look. Hmm. Um, and I watched it and it was very interesting. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's do some disclaimers here, okay? So... Um, you know, we obviously have a we love improvement. We we really we want to put a lot of effort into the game. We want our clients to put a lot of effort in the game because you know when people come to us and people listen to us, we expect that they they know what they get themselves into. Mm-hmm. Like we we want to take responsibility, accountability for actions, yep. and really get into the details and, and figure out what's going on in our games. Yep. Um. So we actually have met Freak. He came to PAX back in yeah. back in he did. back in twenty. 20 is that twenty fifteen? That would have been 2014. 2014. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, eight years ago, he's obviously done a lot for the scene. Yeah. Right. He's been around. He's like one of the first one of employees at Riot Games, I believe. Um, and, you know, he's the champion spotlight. So, let's d- d- frame this by this is purely educational purposes. This is not a attack on Freak. Okay. This is, at the end of the day, we're actually not really going to be breaking down his gameplay at all. It's more about the way he talks about the game. Okay. And just how sort of this is sort of an example of this is what improvement doesn't look like. I have no idea what to expect, to be honest. Right. I, don't, I don't even know what role he plays. What role so does he, he play? I don't. I th- this game's an AD carry game. He plays AD carry. He, he mains oh, AD, okay. and he's platinum too, right? Okay. Yeah. And obviously, you know, one of the mantras in the podcast is that um, you are your, the skill level, the rank system in League Legends, a fantastic job of putting you at your skill level. Yep. So you know, we're definitely not going to see crazy gameplay here. Of course. Okay? Yep. Um, you know, this is his very. You should see button. platinum two level of play. That's right, M- majority of the time. All right, so we will start this. Any other disclaimers around this, Curtis? Anything else we should highlight? Me, I've not, I've never seen this. I have no idea. Okay. All right, so we'll just go through it, I and know I guess we can at. come back to some disclaimers and stuff. But anyway, I just want to okay. let that out there. This is purely educational purposes. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting worried here. There's so many disclaimers. This Bloody is hell. a seven minute and thirty seconds video. Okay. Um, but yeah, just like I want uh, the, our listeners to view this from a lens of, and and the key thing I want also to address is that this is hard. This is not like sort of like, you know, going to be laughing like, oh, look how easy it is for him to just not say these things. This is the hard part about improving is actually doing the opposite of this. This is actually very difficult to do. And our mantra, like, you know, League of Legends is such a game where it's so easy to not take responsibility. It's not a 1v1 game. It's not a fighting game. Okay. All right. So let's go through it. Um, we can pause whenever you want, Curtis. Sure. But I, I already have some points here. So let's get started. So we'll go through the clip, you know, he starts in champ select and we'll go through the game. It's just a little compilation of clips that I okay. came up with. So Lulu Twitch is a pretty good lane in a Sivir. Um, Twitch is good in a Sivir overall. Uh, Seraphine is a fine champion. Uh, playable support, relatively balanced. Let's see what data has about uh, Sivir versus Twitch specifically. Uh, let's go. Let's get as much data as possible. Thirty days, all ranks. Uh, no compelling reason to start Doran's shield. My win rate does drop. This is actually a very good matchup for the Twitch. Um, so yeah, that was a good counter pick. I am no longer advantaged because the lane is going to be very rough. 
Yeah, Twitch's advantage in winning lane, I'm advantage in winning, well, Twitch's advantage in like getting a kill, I'm advantage in winning uh, the tower push, unsurprisingly. Um, yeah, so early lane is going to be Twitch flavored. Uh, but there is no compelling reason to switch out of a standard Doran's uh, Blade plus uh, Potion. Interesting. Last season, the Lulu was Diamond 1. Maybe she decayed out, but... Oh, interesting. They're mostly an AD carry player. Doesn't play much Lulu. Interesting. All right, so first thing there. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the most recent thing, what he's doing there, he's looking up the enemy team's win rate in, okay. the, <laughs> in the champ select, all right? Okay. So we talk a lot about in terms of focusing on what's in your control. <laughs> yep. Win rates, looking up teammates, not going to help, all right? Um, I do like at the beginning, you know, he's starting to think about the matchup yeah. and that sort of stuff, right? He's doing some good things. But what I find more often, not, especially with Platinum and Gold players, is that they've sort of like dictated or decided the game in mm. their mind. It's like, oh, I'm Siva. I don't, I'm not really too good in the 1v1 and stuff. And then they're, they're, they're not, they don't have that message, that, that mindset. It's like, I, I can actually beat them. I'm like going to beat this they're guy. Not, they're not ready to, they're not being in a free flow state where like yeah, the enemy capital missteps, they can capitalize. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Like, like already, like I find already, and again, you can't really, I can't really tell if Freak actually, you know, thinks that and stuff. But again, this is just uh, a lot of them I'm see. seeing from what I've seen, like this is very mm. common in amongst the, Especially yeah. players that have played the game for a long time. Like, obviously, Freak's a commentator in the LCS, right? Mm. He he is like he does have good knowledge. Yeah. It's an interesting one because, like, all right, let's say you get a, a, a mass amount of data and the data says Twitch is most of the time has, like, a, what, a 50... Let's say, I'm assuming, like, a 54% weight rate in Ziva or something. Maybe, maybe 55, whatever. We don't know where that's coming from. I mean, like specifically, you don't, there's no specifics, right? It's not like, um, it's not like that data tells you, changes your behavior. Like, unless like, it's like, okay, maybe Twitch has an advantage where I got to be a little bit careful with my trades. So like, I guess I don't, we don't know how he's interpreting that information. If you were in the most healthy way possible, that would look like, um, okay, maybe I just need to be more cautious, you know? Uh, but, but we're assuming that the Twitch knows how to play the matchup. And we're assuming that the mastery is even between the champions and we're assuming we're just a vacuum and that, that like we have, there's so many variables at play when it comes to like bot matchups, like how the map is played and the junglers and like how that person positions in lane and who has to leash. Like there's so many little details like that really matter that would completely outweigh the data instantly. So I feel like data is not, I don't like using data in this way. I spoke about, I made a video on actually using things like mobilitics and stuff. Data is used best when it's like kind of like a, you're seeing trends holistically in your journey. Things like I'm noticing that I'm dying a lot in the first, like dying to ganks at level three a lot. Like I, I noticed that I actually have, um, like I start well and then kind of I die a lot in mid game or something. Like you want to like more holistic trends in your gameplay. Data is not really good when it comes to like changing your behavior or how you need to approach a lane. I've I've never found it useful to look on look on a, a, a matchup uh, site and 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 look at the win rate and be like, okay, this is not good. Like the only way I'll the only spreadsheet or whatever I would look at is if I had my own personal spreadsheet. So if we're talking mid, I might have like. Uh, people have matchup spreadsheets. It's like, okay, Yone into uh, Silas. This is how like the sort of what you want to do. There's like dot points. Okay, you want to use your E reactively. You want to keep the wave on this side. Like that's actually very actionable, but that's not thing to do with win rates or like data. It's just like, that's just the specifics of the matchup and how the, the kids interact, if that makes sense. So already, you know, that's, in my opinion, that's not the best way to use data. So I guess the we'll see a very common trend through this video mm -hmm. about where his attention is, where it should be. Right. Okay. All right. So any other comments around that one? So obviously the looking up the teammates, that is just big no-no. Oh, yeah. Especially in play. Right? Yeah. You know, it's yep. it just means nothing. All right. Yep. Okay. He smited, which I don't think he should have done because I think he would have actually saved more time spending this since he was already quite low. He could have kept leashing. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> and he could just be putting on a show, you know, like... Yep, that's obviously right, something like, to, to, yeah. to mention there, right? Like, we don't know what if he would do this if it was, if it was normal solo queue. 
That's right. Again, don't view this as just freak. This is I've seen this a lot in my right. clients. So they will look at like let's say, especially um, if they've been a former player of a role. Um, I actually have this with some of my clients. Is what they'll do is that they um, will um, really be critical of people like oh, it's like they play that champ. You know, like let's say well, they're a mid player and they play used mm. to play Cassio. They'll mm. be like talk. They'll be focusing in the game. Oh, that person you, you should have built this. You should build really item. Bad. I wouldn't have done yeah, this yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So I, again, I see this a lot. Mm. You know, mm. again, like view freak is sort of representation of like a lot of clients that I've dealt with and stuff. And as they come to the salt, I have to sort of rehabilitate them. So again, focusing. So what he was talking about there was how the jungler, um, he they got a hard leash and he shouldn't have smited, which is actually true. We actually didn't need to smite there at all. But again, focusing on things that's not really in our control. We got to focus on other things in the early game. What you should be thinking about here is where did the enemy jungler start? What am I want to do? Like you know, they're going to get you know we're going to be late to lane. They're in lane first. Or, uh, not smiting can help it if the leash is good, especially if like Gromp is still coming up or something. It's here. Yeah, I feel like we're pretty comfy. Which ult should be down, I think. Anyway, this makes the character feel a lot better when you get... Right, so you just skip forward. Is that yeah, what you yeah, did? So yeah, we're, we're oh, sorry. We're just, do I need to go back for no, context? No, no, no. I, I just got confused. Because like, you're level 1, now we're level 8. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, yeah, so, so let's give me context here. So you skip for now with 14 minutes in the in game. The game three, right. four, five. Yep. There's been lots of fight and stuff like that. Again, I don't want to get into the, okay, to yep. the, to the details. So he's got his crack and Slayer, here. Berserk agree. So the game's pretty even at this stage from the looks of things. That's right. Okay. All right. Anyway, this makes the character feel a lot better when you get... No, you missed. You can't miss that if you exhausted me. Wait, what? Can you go back? <gasps> yep, we want to go back. Yeah, yeah. Makes the character feel a lot better when you get. No, you missed. You can't miss that if you exhausted me. Oh, it's bad. That's really bad. Okay, so his ult actually is a short. Does he not die mind. anyway? That's the thing. All right, Curtis. All right. Yeah, let me so just look at it one more time. Want to look at it again? All right. Yeah, I want to make sure. Double yeah. Just making sure. Yeah, I feel like we're pretty comfy. And this should be down. I think. Anyway, this, this is just a good play from the a good play from the Twitch, and he completely forgot about the stealth. No, you missed. Pretty sure he got overkilled, like because Twitch had ult as well, that. right? Because he was gonna if die there no matter what. Me. But maybe, maybe he's saying everything could exhaust. Anyway, yeah, okay, but I get the point, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. So the yep. point here the point, again yeah. is the way he talks about it. No. Instant blame, instantly. instantly. Yeah. The Seraphine missing the Q, right? Mm. Whether whether it affects the thing, I mean, it, it, it just yep. doesn't affect it at all, right? Like it's, he's just dead here. But remember, going back into the what he said at the beginning of the champ, he knew that this was a possibility. So this is what I want to really emphasize here is that players they have the narratives, right? It's in there. He he knew that Twitch was really good, and they'll lose two v two all the time, right? I don't know. I don't really know what he thought. I don't. I, 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 don't, I don't actually know what he was like. What conclusions he's drawing from the data. Like, yeah. what, like what, 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 I don't know if he's just saying that to sound smart or if he's saying that because it's actually going to change your behavior. Like, or he thought that he was just going to get shoved in early game. Like, I don't actually know what he, we don't know. We, we don't know what he knows, you know? Yeah. So I think it's kind of hard to say that. Like, I think what I draw from this is the main takeaway from, from what I can see here is that again, it's, um, it's easier to, it's easier to, uh, look at Seraphine missing the E and not exhausting, then it is blaming your own positioning in this situation. But then, because but then the counter to that would be like, uh, I'm assuming the the common response if if this is a client generally would be like, oh, but I only positioned like this because I thought that Seraphine would play out properly. That's right, <laughs> right? Yeah, quite a bit. Yes, <laughs> but but in reality, even if Seraphine played it quote unquote perfectly. It was never going to work out well anyway. That's right. This is not Siva's identity. Yeah. Yeah. And all the, I mean, all he needs to be doing again, if he knows that again, but what I'm saying is that he knows that it's yeah. a bit of a losing matchup. Yep. Why would he not just be playing safer and then just yep. wave clear? Like he could just wake, he yep. knows the stealth is going to happen, right? That's right. You should, and, you should, you anyway. should, right? And, but the thing is that you will know that, but this is where it comes into game sense and focus. And this is all in your rank. Right, like you can have all this knowledge about the game, but this is what I'm trying to I'm trying to emphasize just the respect of how much the you need bridging to play the gap between knowledge and knowledge execution. Knowledge and execution, yeah. correct, right? Yeah. You know, and this is why I'm saying that the narratives and stuff, they really, you know, they're helpful, but like it just goes to show you, like it doesn't really help. Again, I'm gonna rank. tie back to even more of the recent BBC mantra quote, which is 
your your rank is dictated not by the quality of the plays you make, but by the quality of the mistakes you make. And this is a poor quality mistake. You completely forgot like what Twitch does or something. You just you're in La La Land or you forgot about what he does, and you got caught off guard. That's your responsibility to understand what your counterpart does. Right. All right, keep going, Curtis. Yep. Oh, you missed. <laughs> you can't miss that <laughs> if you lost him. But you know, there's obviously social pressure here because he's on stream. And That's he, right. It, it, yeah. It's cool to blame. Actually, you know, well. yeah. Mine. yeah, we can't do anything <laughs> if you don't have CC up. <laughs> right, well, that's again a little bit, a little bit too much. All right, get us calm down there. Right. I like that he's like, like you know, Fre freaks are like a positive summoner. You know what I mean? He's like, he's like trying. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? He's like, yeah. but you know, like again, we got to get into the details. There. It's like you're not winning that even if you have CC up, right? Yeah. The the Seraphine Q doesn't stop the um. Yeah, let's continue. The, right, let's get continue the point. On. All right. <laughs> All right, so okay, so yeah, yeah. Let's explain this here. So what's happening right now? He's typing in the chat um, he's, after he's just uh, died. after he's just died, and he says, "Volley Bear, I think we can straight tower dive their bot lane if you want to play to us. I don't know how they get away from you with my ult." Okay, right. So now he's telling the jungler how to play. Okay, okay. he's died six times, I think, at this point. Okay, um, he again, uh, Freak has good intentions, but. As especially my client, you do not want to hear I'm um, how to play the game from a, you know someone that's six six death. All right, just yeah. in terms of just general psychic etiquette. Um, yeah, it's you know, rude. and and it's pretty. Yeah, it's actually in a way, you it's know, rude. it's a bit rude, isn't it? Yeah. Right, like you know, because what what Volibear is doing here, what we talked about was he's playing. Top, they're actually hard winning through top side. Like they're just. Oh winning. really? Yeah, oh, they, got, they have yeah. a top. Because I, yeah. I don't know the games they run. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So this is top side of Wincon. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So um yeah we that's the way that is the thing and then, and again look at that 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 one line saying I don't know how they get away with you with my alt right mm. it's so theoretical right it's like mm. the, it just doesn't mean yeah. like how do you Cause, how does cause, a seraphim follow up like they could well, have that's actually not how spells. I'm thinking about this at all actually the way I'm thinking about this is yeah so Volicon just born in the lane so it's a little bit theoretical in that sense um but I again I'm just getting a wrong vibe where it's like he's not thinking holistically about the game but but. Again, it's yeah. I really don't like how he's trying to tell the the jungler how to how to play the game here. It's good to give maybe info like they have no sums, like they just have no exhaust or whatever it might be. That's like good info if it's like specific, like no exhaust, no flashes, no alts. Like then whatever. the jungler can do with that information. Yeah, they can do whatever wants. they want, right? But you can tell like freak. He probably he's he probably has good intentions here as well. He's not he's not doing it in an asshole way. He's no. just doing because he probably feels like he has more info. He probably feels like he has more game knowledge than the average player, mm. right? Because he's been playing the game for so long. So you can kind of understand where he's coming from, right? Where it's like, oh, he probably knows more. He thinks that he probably knows more about the game than this volley. So he's giving advice, quote unquote advice to the volley bear. Mm. You know, which, you know, his intent behind it is actually like, if we're talking about pure intent, there's no harm in it. But in reality, though, if we're talking about purely in reality, it's if I'm that jungler, I'm actually going to be quite annoyed. Because like you said, like this guy's got six deaths and they're winning through topside and you're saying you can come randomly bot when you've got no <laughs> wave control. Yeah. It's, so uh, again, I see this yeah. very common, very, very common. They, you said you know, you're golden it, plat it, clients. It, yeah, golden plat clients. They'll come in and they'll be like, they'll say like, this is the win condition because X or like we could just do this easily and stuff like right. that. And it's just like, they don't well, think the you've got to embrace the chaotic nature of the solo queue. You've got to think about the how to get really specific. And again, these narratives just hold you back like a lot. Like there's no flow and adaptability. I, I do want to. I, I don't want to go on a massive tangent here, but I, this this really reminds me of vibes of uh, 2017 Diables mm -hmm. when we had Chippy's top with Shurnfire Jungle, and um, Chippy's is like a type of player. This, he was a player at the time where he he loved diving top, and then there was like a phase where he was like losing trades top a lot, and then he would keep saying to the to Shurnfire at the time like come dive top, but then Shurnfire would pan his camera top, and then like there's no stacked wave, he's got no HP. There's like, he hasn't cleared vision or anything. He's like, how are we going to dive top? We, I can't just randomly dive top. Like, are you going to stack a wave? Like, 
you're low and you need a reset. Like I can't do anything. So like you, you can say that, you can say come dive, but you got to do the legwork, you know? Like you can make calls like this. If if he was actively stacking and building waves into bot and had full control, this is actually a good call. So like just come dive bot. Like it makes sense, but you got to make sure you've done your due diligence before you, you, you go ahead and say something like that. Because otherwise you just actually can ruin the game. You can actually ruin the game like that, by the way, really quickly. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's continue on here. All right, next clip here, what we're showing, we're showing his jungler um, top side here. Yep. Again, sort of showing just the game state. The volleyball is completely traded off bot, which mm -hmm. is actually a really good decision Yep, for him. All and right? Civic can minimize. They can yep. minimize under tower really easily. That's right. Civil. They can clear the wave super quickly. They can right? just defensive ward and clear the wave, one shot the wave. That's right. So as we see here, you know, they come in here, they're trying to fight, they're, this is not really minimizing, right? So just just bringing it back again to just fundamentals and just basics of the game, talking about trading sides, mm. um, you know- Understanding your role. Understanding your role in the games. Like this is, I mean, in terms of a skill in high elo, right? High elo games, um, this is very common. But oh, yeah. in platinum, this is not, you're not really practiced with these situations that much. But again, just bringing it back to- um, you know, the, the narrative Siva matchup, Twitch matchup, all the item focus, it just doesn't matter doesn't when stuff matter. like this is happening in the game, right? It's just one, that he's talking about one percenters when these are like These are the biggers, big, way bigger, right? He's just going to just kill here. And look at what he's he says He's fundamentally here. not understanding how to lose gracefully. So look what he says here. Damn. Oh, she's dead? <laughs> Oh my gosh, if we had GP ult anytime soon. So there we go. Again, there's no emphasis at all how that mm. could be a mistake. And he says, mm. if we had GP ult, again, external, mm. Mm. for grabbing the external, looking at the hindsight play, mm. you know, all that sort of stuff. Damn, that would have been real nice. Well, we got mid tower for it though. It's fine, right? It ends up being a two for two, but it just gets switched so much free time that he's just, he's incredibly ahead of me now. But I can honestly, like, this is what the matchup is, right? Twitch is advantage. We were cutting butter for a while. There were some very close fights. And it's like, okay, look, we have lead in top. We have, I don't know if it's a lead in mid, but like, it should be playable. All right, so you see that, how mm. what he's doing now is justifying, justifying the narrative at the beginning wow. of the game. It's like, oh, there we go. It makes a lot of sense. Like, wow. this is why it is, again, not getting into the details. It's very interesting. Again, wow, I see this so in my clients a lot. This is very common. And this is why I think this is such a great example because you might, let's say if you have friends and stuff, you hear them talk. Let's say they're serious about improving and they watch it. You can call them out for stuff like mm. this because this is really damaging to you actually looking at the game. Because he's justifying his initial comments based off his mistakes based on what's happened in the game wow, that's yeah. so interesting it is isn't it but it, but what would he say if he won lane randomly like jungle gang bot and then they won lane what would he say like would you just ignore the fact what he said at the start maybe like, he'll say that twitch sucks or there's something like that yeah it's so interesting i'm like wonder what in an alternate reality what would happen yeah very interesting all right do you on okay I actually thought I'd win, since I'm literally up items on him. I guess he has a level on me, but like I have, I have upgraded Zerks and this dagger, and I'm like, okay, I should just win. All right, so again, interesting. So he goes for a solo kill, um, but he's and, got and level dies. disadvantage and just dies. And again, he just goes, he, you know, he, I thought I'd win. Mm. Um, which is, I mean, it's a limit test. If it he is, wants to it do is that. a limit test. You yeah. could say, but again, how interesting is it? How yeah. he already knew that he doesn't win one v one, but he's still taking those plays mm. when he's a level down. Mm. Just going to show how the narratives you have at the game, it's it's so much easier said than done as well. Mm. Like it's so easy to be like, go for a kill or something like that, mm. you know. And it. He could have won that. Yes. You, Let me take a look. All right, we'll get into the details. Our, our, our producer here is telling us. I actually, uh, I, I, to be honest, I was just glancing over it, but let me take a look. So he comes in. He ults. He didn't auto cancel with his W, did he? Because you can auto cancel with a W, right? Did he auto cancel? Let me take a look. It should be playable. Okay, let me just take a look. Oh, no, he did auto cancel. And then he missed that he was a slow on audio on the auto attack. And can you can you e the expunge? Ah, you e the expunge. But he did it way too early and did it on nothing, did he? What did he use it on? I believe he would have just expunged the No, I don't think he did. I didn't 
I think he expunged literally nothing. He, he did nothing. Did he? I can't remember. I can't actually tell here what he actually uses Eon. Yeah, I don't even know what he uses Eon. It, it definitely wasn't the expunge, but you can actually outplay that. Yeah. Right. I actually thought I'd win. Since I'm okay, well, fair enough to him then. You thought he could outplay that? I guess he has a level on me, but like... I, right, um, yeah. He's not reflecting. But you don't know that. Like, you you, you don't know those... You, that's something for the review. That's, that's right. Like, oh, I'll it's take it's a look it. at that review. I thought I, I win. Mean, Let's take a look after, like, why I lost that. It's hard to see a lot of this stuff. I don't really... That play, you know, it, it, I don't mind that play, actually. Mm. Okay. Let me let me, let me me get specific here. Mm. In the In the... If you felt as though this was something that was really important to you, for you to learn and you really want to know this, then that, that play is okay. But if you're purely thinking about winning this game, that's not the correct play to make. So that ultimately depends. Are you willing to sacrifice your LP to, to limit test him? Some people are, right? That's okay if you want to really limit test. But I think that, yeah, that's like kind of what my I would say there. I have upgraded Zerks and this dagger. Okay, okay so... He's now three and seven. I believe I was exhausted. I think he just straight up won. I guess the 250 health from minions mattered. But yeah, I legitimately thought it was going to be fine because I had, um, and I guess it's like ruined. Okay, so Lana just gets swapped Kraken. up here. I guess Kraken scales harder. I don't know. Let's be smart. I can play the safe wave clear game forever and let my side okay. win. So let's just kind of do that. Let's try to play around. Hasn't Twitch. done that, but we have a turret to run back to. So it should be pretty hard to execute me. Oh no, don't tell me he goes in here. No way. God damn it, dude. Good charm. It's always a bait every single time. All right, so again, yeah, so interesting. Interesting. again, he, he just said There's exactly what such a what big disconnect between like what he's, what he's saying mm. and what he's doing, mm. isn't there? Mm. Wow, that's so crazy. And again, this is why I say you've got to respect the game and the basics of the game, right? And how, you know, everyone comes in. This is why Reddit analysts and all this sort of stuff, they're so, mm. it's so easy to talk about League of Legends, but the execution, yeah. it's just not it's talked about. It's just not talked about. It's not respected. This is what really upsets me, you know, like, mm. like, cause you know, people think they're, you know, they, they get angry cause they, you know, let's say again, not using freak example, let's say someone who thinks that they have lots of game knowledge about the game and they get really angry. How am I not high ELO? Mm. I have so much game knowledge, game knowledge, game knowledge, game knowledge. And then you look at their game. Gameplay, this is what yeah. you'd say. So I the, the, I want to use this as an example of another thing. So you know how we talk about um we talk about the importance of being high elo as a coach, why we and we believe it's important, right? And this is a really important example for me. So so um let's say uh, you know a very high elo Eddie Carry is not gonna make this mistake. Right, because they know what it feels like as well. Like they, if they could review this and be like, okay, this is specifically how I would be thinking coming out of base to not make this mistake, and they could literally pinpoint, literally, like, like the specific pieces of information and when in the vod that they would process and process that information. So they were actually, if you're if you're high low and you're you've you know you understand this. Because any any man in, any man and their dog can didn't look at Reviews, this and be like got a bronze just don't, could yeah, say it they makes could sense. say yep you, you, do, you don't walk Twitch. up Twitch is stealth just go, yeah right it's so easy but like okay specifically what would I need to do in order to improve with this so the question is actually all back here in the lull state that's why I'm so big on lull states it's actually here coming out of base so when he um, um comes out of base here like this is where he already like now this is where he needs like to press tab and assess key threats okay Twitch stealth. Boom. Like he needs to like literally go boom, like bring them to the top of your mental stack. That's what I do. If I'm playing in a mobile mage and I have no flash, I'm literally in my lol states, pressing tab, identifying who can kill me and like bringing that right to the, I imagine like there's an order in my brain. That's now at the top. Now, because if, especially if I'm minimizing, if you're losing gracefully and you're trying to um, not die, essentially just wave clear, key threat assessment is number one. That's, that's why I don't die in this situation. If I were to autopilot and not think, I'm going to die here like him. I'm going to die like that. So that's, in my opinion, the difference between a, a theorist and a practitioner. The theorist can pin, everyone can pinpoint the mistake, the how to fix that mistake and why, how to prevent that mistake and how to learn from that mistake moving forward is the difference, in my opinion, between an ex, a, a practitioner and a, and a theorist. Hmm. See where I'm coming from? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And let my side to execute me. Yeah, so interesting. Okay, so he dies. He doesn't die this time, but Seraphine has to blow R defensively and he gets completely time. chunked. I don't know why I'm not realizing that. Yep, just give. Actually 
Can you actually reach me? What the fuck? Wait, I spell shield it? You get it? God damn it. I actually know that's how the game works, that like pretty much everything if you spell shield it, they still get their benefit. But bruh. He just compensated, oh, right? Funny. Well, I have zeal for moose speed now that'll help. I got the code shut down, so I have zeal, it'll help. Anyway, I will get the point. Yeah, yeah so you know that that's that's a it's another example of lack of threat assessment. Not yeah, like not really know. understanding Belveth's gap closer. Well, I mean, that was pure. I mean, he shouldn't even be close because there's nothing to yeah, do there, nothing right? Yeah, there's nothing to do there. So, out. again, just showing his instant reaction is blaming sort of like, oh my God, it's crazy that champion can do that. You mm. know, it's like, I, but he's like, yeah, I knew that, but that's not the, that's not the, that's such a, that's not, yeah, that's again, not the actual uh, again, like, of his mistake. It, he's an entertainer. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. This is entertainment. Right. Yeah. Again, I'm, I don't yeah. want to use just, Right. I'm not talking towards freak. I'm talking right. towards the platinum gold players, silver players, and the same, the same again, the same narratives the same that is pushing this again. This is coming from freak, right? Like everyone loves freak. A lot of like, especially like the lower the community love freak. So what they will see is like, like my clients will say, you know, let's say a mistake happens, and then they'll be the narrative. Of the thing is like this champion is broken, man. You know, mm. versus the mistakes actually way back. You shouldn't even. You should be as you know. You have poor threat assessment of mm. when the champion can actually do to you. Mm. So this is just another common theme I've seen. They've got a lot recently. I think my heel was down at the time. He's up to Kali E. I think, well, here's the thing though. Like things like a Kali E, that feels like that's fair to not work. What's he talking about? Since like marking. He's talking about the spell shield and how it interacts with abilities. Yeah. Right. His positioning is terrible here. So he basically flanked as Siva here in this was. fight. Let's just look at this again. Like so, now we're 25 minutes of the game, and he's flanking as a Siva at this team fight. So he looks like he's late to this fight for whatever Marking reason, and he's in a terrible position. I don't know what that was. I don't know why I walked in like that. Got the two for two, but. I probably shouldn't have played for Midwave. I probably should have come around. Too far. <laughs> I played. I played really greedy around mini waves and shouldn't have. And I think just like one mini wave wasn't the right choice there. there. All right. Well, uh, I'm not the reason we're winning. I believe it is the seven, one, and eleven Volibear who probably hasn't bought it. Uh, that's my that's my coaching client, that the Volibear. What no, I love about that, and again, again, this is nothing on. I, again, I don't want this to be on Freak, but that is like a that is probably something that i would expect from that's like a gold four mistake in terms of the, the so the i i i've always view mistakes I, I use this analogy all the time the bell curve right so mm. let's say he's plat two mm. right the reason he's plat two is that like right now to be honest is that again on the left hand side of the bell curve he's got shit that is golf legit goal four level in his gameplay and then he's got stuff on the right hand side. They might do maybe it's like again his analysis of builds or something. Diamond two, like he'll be like yeah, really good at building. Like maybe Master Hero challenge, challenge yeah, or something. I don't know. Right. He's got like this. He's got like this really Big elongated, range. really like insanely long, ex skewed uh, bell curve. And the reason he is what he ranked that he's at is purely not because of the fancy stuff. It's the basics. Basics. Like that's right. that is actually like a, 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 it's ADC one hundred and one. Like. I don't want to flank on Sivir and I need to be with my team front to back. Front to back, yeah. Especially with the my front line. GP and Seraphine. GP, Seraphine, Volibear, front line, yeah. Aatrox. It's literally like the, the definition of front to back. So like these are the, the mistakes you need to focus on. Again, it's not the- And he's got build. 11 deaths. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah. these are the, the, like that's like end of review level stuff, you know? Dude, the, the mistakes in the early game end of review. That's right. Like walking up in lane versus Twitch stuff, it's end of review. And this is why we have the end of review process. Because yeah. you've got to be hard on yourself for these mistakes, otherwise you're going to keep making them. And he has, you, you can tell, like that's why he's, you know, making these mistakes. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're so sloppy. And and by the way, you know, even if you're autopiloting, right, which he could be, right, we don't know. He's trying um, to entertain, he's got yeah. things about the Twitch chat, he's right. probably maybe pissed off about his performance. But your autopilot should not be that low. Like the more you play it and you, if you really get bet, get good at the game even when i'm autopiloting right take me or you for example your autopiloting is still going to be at like like a d1 level or something like master tier level like you can't even on autopilot you're not going to make mistakes that are that of like because we're challenger players because your fundamentals are so good yeah you know even autopiloting you can't possibly make those quality of mistakes like that's just you know 
it's inexcusable. I, I think your level of autopilot actually is in your rank as well, right? Like, I think that's part of it. It's as part well. of it, Because you're never not going to always... We talked about this in the last episode. You're, you're not going to be high intensity all the time. All the time. Yeah. You've got to rely sometimes on the autopilot, your yeah. instincts, your game instincts, and, which and, takes and a lot of time to practice. I just, I just tie this back as well, like here, looking at this gameplay. It, it, it's, um, it's, it's interesting because it now makes what he was saying in the champ select comical. It does, doesn't it? It's kind of comical. Mm. It's like... It, it, it's the equivalent of, of kind of talking about like what sort of guitar pick you are using and you don't even know how to play a chord. You know, the guitar pick you use has no, uh, it's like a 0.01 percenter. <laughs> you know, you know? What, uh, the very common trend you see, uh, you know, when people like could start YouTube channels and like streamers and mm -hmm. stuff and they sit there and they study um, microphones and webcams and stuff like that. They haven't posted a single thing yet. Oh right, right, right. They're starting, they're starting the a YouTube thing. channel and they're trying to get the perfect setup. Perfect than just setup. like it's everything's put perfect, it out there, put the right? videos out there, and learn it's how to. Very relatable to League. It's yeah. like what's the perfect, but what's the perfect item? What's the matchup? What's all the game knowledge? When it's yeah. like you haven't even created an identity, you don't even know what content you're putting out. You, you don't even, even know how to talk. You don't even know how to talk, talk into the, camera. the camera. It's like we talk about how shit our first videos were. My first video yeah, was mine were terrible, horrendous. I don't. I can't even watch them. My old videos, I can't. Same. That's another good example. I think as well. Yeah, yeah, and I think that. You know, again, we're using Freak as an example here, kind of like we did with the Kyose situation. It's like, we are going to have to just, you know, pick a, pick on a few people <laughs> <That's right. laughs> to make an example this of This is them. fantastic learning. It's fantastic man. learning to and spread. And I see so many relatable in my yeah. clients, you know? It's like, this makes sense. Yeah, it, it should, it, it's the one thing I last thing I'll say here is that, you know, Freak is, is nearly like the perfect representation of what the game will do to you over playing it for a large amount of time, being around the same people and like following the same narratives. Like he's the definition of like, if you were to like really be play the game for that long and he's like the perfect representation of the uh, mediocre league player, isn't it? It's like, that's literally the behavior, the, the narrative. Mediocre or advanced, like mediocre or advanced. Cause he, he's, you well, know, well, not, you know, mediocre advanced, is not the advanced. right word, but like he's the perfect representation of all the narratives but someone who still kind of tries, he cares about the game and he still cares. He wants to improve. Like he's the perfect representation of a person who wants to improve, but is so deep in the narratives that he's not even aware of what he's doing. Like if he, if, if he were in our shoes and like he was on this, like he has a third chair and he's looking at this, he would like, he could get it. Oh, absolutely. But he's in it. He's in the shit. It's so hard, hard for him to be objective about. And I, and we all can empathize. Like we've all been there where, We've had games and then you don't know what you're doing. I spoke about this. I exposed myself on the last episode. Right, oh, my gameplay. I mean, if there was a montage of my, some of my worst games in the last two years, I looked like a gold, yeah, right. gold but, silver player. But we, we also, you, it's easy to become straight delusional about what you believe about the game or what you're doing in the game. Like I said with my Ari, right? Where I was straight compensating for my terrible wink on assessment. I'm literally playing to my weak side, similar, I'm making similar decisions to that, but you're so unaware of it. And the only way to get out of it is you got to like really reflect. You can tell he hasn't put that time in to really reflect and be honest with himself. He hasn't been curious. That's the thing he's missing. He's not, he's not putting aside his ego and he's not being curious. He's everything that I see here. And I've, I've, I have had clients like this in the past. I would say, I would argue that I don't have many, Maybe they're just scared of me getting getting roasted or something. I don't know. There's not many of them. But if they... I have had them. But the first thing I'll say is um, I don't care what you know or how smart you think you are about the game. Like, I just get straight into, like, the details. Do you have champ mastery? Get into the mid lane fundamentals. Are you dying to level three ganks? Like, it just cuts the fat so quickly. But someone has never told him that. No one's, like, give him the harsh reality check that he needs. And he needs it. But, but I feel like he, he, the, these people that – it's the ego that screws them. It's their – he's thinking in the back of his mind, I'm freak. I've got all this experience. I've been I'm teaching the game. I make commentator. YouTube videos. I watch, I, watch, I watch the best players all I've the time. I've been playing since season one. Yep. Like he, he, he's, he's bogged down so deep by that. Not Until he really drops that and tries to relearn the game kind of from scratch – He's going to continue like this, That's right. unfortunately. And and you, the, I, you know how you said in terms of like he wants to improve. Remember, there's levels of effort to improve That's in right. as well, right? Like let's say Freak's life was on the line. I bet you he'll be able to figure this out. He's a smart guy, yep. right? 
Uh, it's like when you go to the gym, you have intensity. You can you can push yourself in the gym, but you know some people don't really want to, right? They're just happy with their physique. Or stuff. I think it's also it, it it reminds me of the the riot conversation we had with Frox on, and he said everyone. Uh, I love that what he says like everyone has an opinion until they have to put their their career on the line. You know, when people really have something on the line and they really want to do something, or like their reputation or their career is on the line, they will they won't say or do. They will behave differently. They will behave differently. So I agree with you. He doesn't really, really want it. Like he's kind of passionate, but he doesn't really, really want it. David Goggins, you know, he's saying that people think their limit is actually only 40% of what they're capable of. It's like a motivational thing, mm. you know, like mm. it, it, get excited, guys. Like there's so much, you could be pushing yourself so much more, you know? Mm. Oh, should we continue on, guys? We've got another sure. minute of the video. All right, so this is a situation. So okay. just explain. We're like more in the mid game mid- now. Yeah, I mean, this is dragging something. This is where the team fights are going to happen, right? Yep. We see uh, everyone mid. Okay. Dragon's about to spawn. Dragon's going to spawn. You know, he's with his team. All good. Enemy team goes missing from mid. Yep. Right? He doesn't know which direction they're going. No way. And he gets caught. No way. Hold on. I'm surprised that fight was not us just outright winning. It's like, I can't. Again, um, he said there. I'm surprised that fight was just not outright winning. Mm. You got to get specific, man. Mm. You know, like it makes perfect sense, all right? And again, he it might not be. It might be hard to see it in the. And yeah, he's on stream. You can see this in the review, but that's incredibly obvious. Yep. All right, and this is what again. These are the basics. ADC fundamentals. ADC fundamentals. And just in terms of just game sense awareness, where everyone is on the map. You, right? you know something's gone horribly wrong when you've died 13 times. <laughs> you've ADK. literally got a third of the team's deaths. Yeah. More. And as He's got we, more than a third of the team's deaths as an 80 carry. And as we say, the quality of your deaths equals the... The quality of the mistakes dictates your LB, yeah. basically. Team fight with Twitch hitting me and I can't debate with her diving me. So I'm not sure how to play this one out exactly. <laughs> so, you know, he instantly goes to a narrative. You know, it's like, that's not the problem why you're losing fights, uh, Freak. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, he's going, I can't let Twitch dive me, you know? <laughs> Well, we got to keep it simple. Like, yeah. like it's, I, I can actually empathize where he's trying to, he, he's doing like mental gymnastics, trying <laughs> to figure out like how, what the grand conspiracy of why he's dying. When it's like the obvious thing, it's like, is it Occam's razor that, that th- where it's like um, the, uh, the answer, it's like the, the thing with the least. Uh, the most obvious answer is the answer. Yeah. The most obvious answer is the, an- the correct answer. Mm. If something's really obvious and explains it, that's probably true. Mm. It's kind of like, it's not some crazy conspiracy theory. No, it's like you need to, if you're not standing in front of your front line, that's probably, like, let's just get that first. You know, like that's, an, that's a, you know, you're a squishy, like this is thinking really, really basic. Like you're a squishy 80 carry. You don't want to be in front of your volley bear. You want to be behind your volley bear, you know, like just like basics, like 101, right? Um, which is just, is just interesting. <laughs> Thirteen deaths. There we go. Pump the CS stats. There we go. GG. Um, and hey, we got a winning record. <laughs> we have a winning record finally. <laughs> He's got like t- fifty games played. Fun game, GG team. Well, so what's going on here? He's just reading the, the chat and everyone's talking about the end of the game. The, these platinum players are like saying, talking about the last fight, like the inhibitor and Freak's giving them advice about, you know, what they should have done in the <laughs> team, right? You know, he's saying, I think trading bot inhib was fine and everyone's going crazy. Like, yeah, we shouldn't have, someone said on the enemy team, um, we shouldn't have fought, but also shouldn't split. You know, it's like, there's so many mistakes that have been made, right? And it's just funny how like Freak's chipping in. It's like, yeah, like guys, you should have done this. You know, it's like the focus is all wrong, right? And and the interesting <laughs> thing as well, like, you know, we talk about, again, we, we can't say what Freak, the way he viewed that that thing, but he got, he won. He got the LP. He was super excited. He promoted, right? Those games, the wins are more dangerous than the losses because, you know, does he, I looked at the stream. He didn't obviously review after this, right? But again, he's just streaming. He's only yeah, played 50 games a season. He's just chilling. But just demonstrating again, like how it's like you think you know you have the audacity to like tell the enemy team how they should have played, like you know, yeah. and I've, you know what I mean. Like again, he's trying to be a cool, fun summoner and stuff, but it's <laughs> it's just got to show how dangerous. You know, he got completely carried. 
and made the game so difficult for his yeah. team to win. Yeah, maybe it's in his contract. Maybe he has to do this, dude. Maybe, maybe <laughs> he has to be a nice, nice guy and educate If he wasn't right, right he'll just be like the optimal macro, <laughs> <laughs> the mid game best mid game macro. But like, it, you can't even comment on the macro though, yeah, because like you're literally frontlining a sitter, <laughs> yeah. so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So um, yeah. yeah, definitely an interesting little video here, Nathan. Mm. Um. I don't even, this is pretty ridiculous. It is a bit silly. Just goes to show, just goes to show that games played or time playing the game doesn't automatically equate to um, your skill, right? And knowledge doesn't equate to LP. It's execution. Intentional matters. practice, deliberate practice. Deliberate practice. The Veritasium yes. video we talked about in last episode. Yeah. That's, you know, there's there's no deliberate practice. You know, there's no, he's not really reflecting. The deaths don't feel like they're painful but, at but all for you free. you know, I do, I will say here that Freak is an outlier because he's an old school player. Like whenever I get, we get clients and I, I ask them a question, how long have you been playing the game for, man? And they say, oh, I'm an old school. I've been playing in season two, season three, season one. I already know if they're not diamond, it's going to be a, a, a slaughter. Like it's going to be rough because they're, they're not like the, they've been beat down. They've been beat down by the game for a long time and likely have some crazy narratives. It's ingrained. You're like, it's yeah. like growing up. Like you're just, this is, this is your, it's yeah. ingrained. You play the game for 10 years. Yeah. It's been more than 10 uh, years. It's very people. difficult it's, to change those clients. Those are the hardest exactly. to work with. So like you can, I can, I can feel, I do empathize here with, with Freak because He's played the game since like beta. Dude. Literally. Like, literally beta. So, so we're he's talking um, about 12 years. He's thousands and thousands of games, normal games. He's done the whole, his life is the game. So like, I can't even imagine the narratives that he would have. So like, you know, in a way he is an outlier. That's right. But again, not excusing it, but I'm kind of adding a little color there. Definitely an interesting one though. Good choice. And, uh, your Volibear played well, Nathan. There you go. Your Volibear played very well. And even Freak mentioned, he said, you know, thanks to the Volibear for carrying. Okay. I think he honored him at the end of the game as well. So. Beautiful. So moving on. Yep. Um, I've got a few things, but let's start with, I want to start with a very pragmatic topic here. Um, a trend has started to occur a little bit in the Midland Academy, and uh, I'm sure it's also happening in some way, shape or form in the Soul 2, where it almost feels like people are confusing hindsight bias with like a lack of intensity so for example uh i had i did a review this morning with Valksor and he's like katarina and he's he, we, we, at the start of the vod i always ask why are we what why are we reviewing this for like what are we looking for in particular you have any reason and he says look i think that i wasn't using my lol states properly in the mid game I feel like there was something wrong there. So like we get into it, get into the mid game and it was a tough game, right? It was a tough game where the win cons weren't really clear. You know, those tough games where it's, it's not really obvious what your role is in the game. And like, everyone's kind of like, there's no obvious secondary win condition. And so it was a confusing game and we went into it. We identified some key moments where he shouldn't have been in the side. He should have been grouping so on and so forth. And after I said, dude, this has nothing to do with intensity. It has nothing to do with your poor lol state usage. You just you just don't know what you don't know. Like this is new information. This is inform this is this was out of your pay grade, dude. Like you just don't know this stuff. This is new stuff. Like, did you genuinely know this? He's like, oh yeah, in hindsight, I, I like I yeah, I should have uh, he said, like, yeah, in hindsight, after I reviewed this, I recognize that I probably should have been in the side here with a Vlad. I should have been grouping. That's in hindsight, man. Like you didn't know this in the game. You can only do something. You're only capable of doing what you know. You're not capable of doing something that you don't know. And I, I, I found this come up as well because people say things like, I felt like my intensity was low. I feel like that's the reason I'm losing. I'm making these things. My intensity is low. Your ego wants to tell you that. Or, 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 your, or it's like a defense mechanism. You don't want to admit to yourself that you actually don't know this stuff. This is out. like you. It's And it's okay to say that you don't know something. It's actually in a way freeing. It's like, I never would have made this decision. It was. It, that actually it was 100% me, you know, back in season nine, 10, when I was just bouncing around Diamond. Hmm. I definitely thought I was way... I knew way more than I actually did. And like, I really didn't. Because it's all in hindsight. And it is. It was all in hindsight. It's, all in hindsight. it's like, I would never even look for this play if, if, even if I um, had high intensity. Yep. You know? If I'm the highest intensity in the world, I'm never going to make that play. No, that's right. You but know, coming to that conclusion, that it's hard. It's hard to say that. You never hear people say that. No, no. And when I did say that, that's when I got insane effort because I just like, I just accepted setback. I, I, my decision making is dominant. How can I improve this? What, what do I need to do? What's going on? And when you actually say, okay, 
this is okay. It's the the ultimate way to learn in those situations would be okay. I now know what the optimal decision was. If I'm in this situation again, what are the signs for me to make this play? What specific? What are the variables specifically that I need to look for in my lull states to come to this conclusion? What is it that I didn't consider? Like specifically, then you pinpoint what those things were. Oh, I didn't realize that. Um, they have that amount of engage or I couldn't match that champ in the side or so on and so forth. That's where you get the most learning. But again, it's easier said than done, but that's like kind of what we should strive for. So I think it's like, I wanted to give the heads up, a bit of like a, a reminder, a, a trend and to raise awareness towards this concept. And it's, it's very easy to do. I think we should all be wary of that, myself included. Very easy to use hindsight bias there. Um, now I... Uh, spoke with my friends uh, about uh, she is currently kind of doing her PhD in uh, I think uh, like the, some form of addiction. I think it was believed uh, diet, something around uh, eating disorders as well and, and this sort of stuff and doing a PhD at the moment. And um, I just having a conversation about some of, is there some parallels between what you're learning in your PhD and some of the, the ways you're breaking this, this down versus like the narratives of stuff that I have to overcome. Like if you're dealing with a client that has an eating disorder, I ask like, what's the process? Like, how do you, what's the process look like to really, est- like when you're sitting down with one of these clients, how does it look like? What's the step one, two, three, four, how do you break down the what's going on and, and raise awareness towards it? And she mentioned something called the four P's, the four P's here. And I, I, I kind of did a little bit of research here and this is, Super interesting because you can use this 4P factor model to actually uh, kind of deep dive into league narratives as well. So there's four stages here. I'll kind of quickly run through this. So this is about breaking down the narratives around getting rid of the eating disorders. No, this is like, a, 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 I guess, like a, a model a, a model they use to, to, to overcome any any narrative okay. or any, any psychological problem so these are like deep psychological like this is like ingrained narratives yeah yeah stuff like that yeah ingrained okay. narrative maybe narratives you, you or behaviors that are learned based off like uh like childhood essentially like that so the first step is predisposing which basically is like why me and the way i interpret this is like this is kind of like understanding your league journey like why am i the person i am today like what is what has happened in my past that has contributed to where I am today. And like in this case, for example, examples, I said, um, you know, genetics is one of them, family history, mental disorder. Like basically these are like things that have basically gone on that are personal to you in your life that has contributed to who you are today, right? Then there is precipitating. Why now? Like what has happened? Like it says here, precipitating is usually about what has brought them here today or why is the patient coming to see you? What has made them take the decision to come? Because something must have actually triggered this right? Like to, to bring this narrative to the forefront and examples could be like in, in, in this case, like bullying or some like catastrophic event, like a family member passing away in league. I tie that more back to like a severe loss streak or like just demoting like down five divisions or they come to our coach. They come to our coach. Like, why now? You know, out yeah. of all the times you could have come, like, why now? Why did this, why is we, why are we exposing this now in a way? You know, I found that interesting because like getting into that conversation is super interesting as well. Like why now? Like, why not? Why not like a, th- a year ago or six months mm, ago? Like why mm. now? Which is very, really interesting. And then the next one is perpetuating. So why is this narrative continuing? Like what's what's holding this narrative in place? So this it says here, these are the current things that are making the patient's condition endure as symptoms become progressively worse. So, you know, it could be in this case, examples, an abusive relationship, substance abuse, unsupportive environment. And tying this back to league, this could be like a toxic friendship group that's like kind of holding you into this narrative or like expectations that people have set onto you or you're scared people looking at your OPG or you don't want to look bad in front of your friends and ask basic questions or you're scared of getting coaching and improving or maybe you have a fixed mindset. Like these are things that are like uh, perpetuating this, this, this constant narrative that you might be having, which I, again, I found really interesting. This is a really good way of like, why is this still here? Hmm. Why hasn't this naturally fixed itself? That's a very... You'd need someone to help you with that one yeah. specifically because a lot of people wouldn't know. It's they wouldn't like their know, friends yeah. are holding the back or their expectations. Because it's, it's, just... it's hard when you're in it. Again, it's hard. You don't know, know the other it. side in a way. Yeah. Well, if I'm in it, what else is there? Yeah. Yeah. You don't really know what else is, is there. Yeah. 
So they would need someone. That's why I think coaches and like, you know, therapists and all that stuff are so useful because yeah. they help you see, they help you walk through these objectively, walk yeah. you through these steps. I love that step as well. Like if you're asking yourself that question, like or, or getting a friend to ask you that question, like why am I, like why is this still a thing? Why am I still going through this cycle? And then the last one is kind of like the protective, like what can I do now to um, reduce or prevent the occurrence or the reoccurrence of this potential disorder or, or narrative? Um and it talks about, you know, like firm support, education, healthy habits, um, resilience, developing resilience, um, all this stuff, like things that you can actually do. And that's like coming to the coaching session, surrounding yourself with uh, like-minded individuals, getting into the review, asking high quality questions, like things like that. And I just love this model. I thought it was like a really, how, how many parallels there are between the psych, this field of psychology and, thera and therapy um, and, and mental disorders and the narratives that we face in, in the League of Legends uh, field. I thought that was pretty cool. That's, I love it. Those are some powerful. Those are high quality questions and getting into the details. Very, very similar to what we talk about in the podcast. And um, and in in the actual their approach, they actually kind of ask these four, go through these four stages in three categories: the biological, psychological, and social. So they look at every single aspect. So in league, that would be like you that maybe look at it through a social lens, and then look at it through like maybe um, yeah, a psychological lens and a biological lens, like maybe biological meaning. I'm assuming ADHD or something like that, or hmm. I, I don't know. But yeah. I'm just I just thought this was really cool. I thought it was if someone wants to kind of um, learn more about this, just type in the four P factor model and its purpose in psychological medicine. I just thought it was really interesting. Um. Last thing I will say here, Nathan, sorry to take over the show, but uh, really, really interesting. Um, where was it? Sorry, one second. Okay, so I have an MLA client who actually works at Amazon. And he um, he got inspired by the Nile. I believe it was the, the Nile uh, uh, interview I did on YouTube with him, basically saying, okay, if you feel as though you... Uh, if you feel as though you know the answer, ask why three more times. So say why, 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 why? And he's like, this is actually something that we do at Amazon. And it's called a five why system for our cause of error. And he showed me an example. So I'm going to read out this example, how they use the five whys at Amazon to break down problems. I found this fascinating. So start, this is what it says, five why. Start with the problem. Keep asking why until you get to all contributing and root causes. Five whys is a helpful mnemonic. Um, but authors are encouraged to use more than five causes as they complete their root cause analysis. Consider environmental and systemic factors that may have contributed prior to the immediate incident. Okay, so this is an example here. Um, the Lincoln Memorial is deteriorating. Okay, that's the problem. Okay. Why? Harsh cleaning chemicals are being used on the surface. So we need to investigate potential cleaning chemicals which do not degrade the surface of the memorial. So that's the second one, second one? Yep. Why? To clean off a very large number of bird droppings. Why? Because birds are attracted to the large number of spiders at the monument which they eat. Why? Spiders are attracted to the large number of gnats around the monument which they eat. Why? Gnats are attracted to the lights at the monument at dusk. Therefore... Change the lighting schedule to only turn on lights after twilight. Unbelievable. That's the solution. You save yourself that entire problem by changing that one thing. You could easily stop at one of those steps, right? Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah. I like, when I was reading that, I'm like, this is game changing. And it, it, it is such a simple solution at the end. It's just all to do with the lights. And, and it makes me wonder again, how many, how could we use this in. Going over your review, okay, so um, you're you're losing pressure in mid. Why? Um, because the enemy's taking. Uh, you're, you're getting chunked or or something. Why? Because um, I need to walk up to last hit. Why? And like you can like break it down. I'm sure there's like situations we can go down and pinpoint specifically what's happened, and it's probably a tethering problem. Mm. You're not you're not tethering mm. properly, or you're not sacrificing certain CS mm. or. 
whatever it might be, you're not baiting out abilities. It'll come down to some like really fundamental thing in the lane when it comes to trading. You can lose in so many situations. You know the you know the why, why, why? Mm. I with the end of review that I come up, I'm already at the fifth step. I instantly do that. Cause you know where people yeah. they look at fights later. We in the know game. what the why, why, why is in a way, right? You're saying. Yeah, but look yeah. it's like let's say you die at like literally I, I actually reverse engineer it just naturally. Interesting. Yeah. Because um like say someone comes to a review saying um, uh, there's a great example I talked about in a couple of episodes about or Albin and the Mordekaiser yeah. he said Mordekaiser was super out of control this game he and said then, why and then I didn't even get to the when he was out of control we ended the review when he when he, they got triple killed at the dragon remember uh, that story yeah 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 because you already knew and yeah. that's why he got out of control yeah. but you went to the root cause automatically like I, you could stem it back that's right and like step it back you, but you already, you already knew instantly what that root cause was because like it's like simple and you already know mm. you've seen similar situations mm. Yeah, that's in a way what coaching is. Like we actually are able to identify the root cause straight away because straight we've away, seen right. so many. We know what the what happens after this. We know what the chain series of events. Are. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. That's what end review is, isn't it? That's right. The end review is we're all actually identifying the root in a way the root cause because then we know because if we fall if you continue this game and follow the events as a result of this mistake. It's going to lead to more and more and more problems, like losing farm, and then they get more items, and then you lose that dragon fight, and then they get barren. You actually just go back, 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 and back, that's back. The nature of the the structure of the game. Yeah, the structure of the and game. The right. snowball it is. Yeah, it's so cool. It is cool. That I think you could you could have two components. You have like that component of the game, the snowball, but you could also break it down in terms of like your skirmishing or mm. something like that as well. Mm. The the five wires as well. Yeah. In terms of like yeah, in skirmish as well. Yeah. Let's say for example, like the the, the freak, freak, right? You know, let's say he got you know he didn't see mid. Um, mid, he didn't see them come in mid. Mm. Then uh, he went was just in the position because he didn't respect. It. It's like you bring it back. It's like why? It's why? like well, you know, this is not how Civ fights, and you can bring it back. It's like well, why? You know why? It's why? Like, well, I didn't even know they were there yeah. in the first place. It's like you know why weren't you there in the first place? You didn't know that because it's like I didn't have intense. I wasn't thinking about this. Well, I wasn't using my lol states. Lol or whatever. states I wasn't looking right. at the map. Why? You know, you, you know? keep going. In. And yeah. It's like, I don't have, and then it's like I didn't sleep that night. Why? You know? Yeah. It's like, I don't give a fuck about the game. What is it? You know? Yeah. But that is hard. I mean, it is definitely hard to do that with some clients, especially issues that are outside of the game because yeah. I don't know them. I didn't spend all day with them, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> like uh, I, don't, I don't know them well enough to get that deep sometimes. So you have sometimes to- we don't even need to get that deep. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes, sometimes let's, it's just, just, let's just address the core issue yeah. in the game and then if it's a... Not, if it's not getting fixed and your level of play is not improving, then we might need to go a bit deeper. It definitely could But actually, funnily like enough, I actually sometimes go the other way around. I actually do address the stage three psychological issues first. Because otherwise, I found it to be a waste of time. Okay. So I have actually depends on the this this the problem. Like yeah, it does depend on the problem. But I've I've had too many painful experiences where I've wasted weeks of coaching with someone that I and when I haven't addressed the stage three problem, and then we end up going backwards anyway. Yeah. So I now like that's why I ask those questions and like I try to really bring out like the the bullshit narratives like from the get go. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a good point. And I, I actually already know by the way the people that I know have narratives and they're not honest with me. I already know that this is a waste of time. Mm. Like I already know, like sometimes in the review, like when not, you're not honest with me. I already can tell you're not being honest with me, mm. but I'm just going to do it anyway and hope that it works. But I already 95% chance it won't work anyway. Mm. Yep. Cause I, I can't make you do it. You know, I can't no, make right. them tell me the truth. No. Yeah. Some people will just want to, yeah. Defend the ego. Yeah. They want to defend it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I have some situations. If I if I see someone talking about the game in a certain way, I'll be like, I'll just address that and not review the game at all. Right. Because I say, if you talk the way, if this is your mindset towards <laughs> yeah. your teammates, you know, you know the example yeah. of when we talked about that a couple of episodes ago, he viewed his teammates as enemies. There's right. so many problems before. I mean, there's nothing to look at in there's the game. There's nothing to look at, like, yeah. We got re- to visit this why, what's going on there. Yep. Anything else you want to talk about? Mailbag time. Lovely. Away we go. Welcome back for Nathan's Mailbag. Jingle, jingle, jingle song. Welcome back, everyone, for Mailbag. First question here comes from Calvin. Calvin's written into us a couple of times. Title of this email is my biggest losing streak learning experience. Hi, Curtis and Nathan. I recently went on a 10-game losing streak over the past three days. My losing losing streaks have never really gone over five, six in my life. 
So this one was a bit of a shocker. I just want to share my experience and how I dealt with this mentally. When the losses started, they were genuinely difficult games where I had a losing top side and I wasn't winning bot lane as ADC either. I just wrote these first three games off as a tough block and carried on. After the next three losses, I started to get really emotional in my games. I started typing too much, and there were some games where I destroyed any chance of winning I had in them. Going into losses, um, you know, the 8-10 mark in a row, I realized that I was so demoralized by my previous losses that I was just missing uncontested CS, doing just basic mistakes. So in games, you know, 10, 11, I decided to laser focus on CSing. I still lost those, but I was completely fine with it. I shifted away from emotions for two games and my mental fact just, just felt so clear. Another thing I reminded myself was, is that my LP is a reflection of my league performance, not me as a person. I'm working two jobs and gym in six days a week. At the end of the day, league is secondary to my success as a person, and that realization helped me. As I'm writing this, I think I had a David Goggins cookie jar moment where I reflected my previous accomplishments to help me get through a hard time. I don't know if I articulated this good enough. Maybe you guys can help clear it up. Thanks for all you do. I like the references to Goggins, the cookie jar. What's stuck out there for you, Nathan? Um... I was so surprised already. He hasn't not lost more than like six games in a row. That's crazy. Yep. Um, before I, the, the lost streaks, this is where it builds character guys. You've got to love it. Do not view. It's so easy in the moment to view the lost streaks as like, Oh my God, you know, I'm so bad. I've gone backwards, gone, you know, I'm so bad at the game, but these, you've got to love those, those streaks in my eyes. Um, so yeah, just, just, it's just normal, man. Like it's part of the journey. You've got to develop a toolkit, man. And, You've got to develop and, the toolkit. And that's, I think, the main learning is that yes. when you go into these holes, that's when the toolkits really come into play. So when you've lost those three, four in a row, and then you're loading up your next block, and then you're starting to reflect already, like maybe the three, you haven't let go of the game before or the block before, and you're starting to perform. Like there needs to be like a stop gap in a way where like, okay, you've, you've registered that there's a problem. And that's where the toolkit really comes into play to save you. And, that, and you know, that's where tying things back to fundamentals, chair mastery, mastery. What are my reference points? Thinking big picture really helps. It's like, what does this mean in the context reviewing of my before, journey? Reviewing your games before your block so you can actually see what's happened in your previous game. Getting a friend to quickly take over it. Maybe I look with you, right? We'll take a look over a lane or two with you to get an objective opinion. These are things that we can do to, to, to kind of break down, um, identify the core issues. I do want to kind of flow on from this and then take a little tangent, a bit of a tangent here. You know what you just said there, which was um, your LP is a reflection. Or no, you said something, or you said, or he said, he said your LP is a reflect. You know, your LP is a reflection of your level of play. Yeah, your league performance. League he befo said. Sorry, your league performance is a reflection. And his of point your was he was he disconnected himself his added identity level with his league performance because yeah, we had lots of other right. things going well in his life. And you said something else after that, didn't say. you? You said something about how. Uh, the the LP as a do you say something about LP? Anything, no? no okay my point being is that um I believe that you can actually regress yes absolutely. and you actually will get worse absolutely. in, in per certain periods of time for whatever reason inevitable one hundred percent happen I think I'm getting I'm actually think I'm at that stage in my rank journey recently by the way yes and people don't understand this mm. and um I've had two clients recently Raphael right Raphael who wrote in and did the whole video and Daniel as well, who we keep referring to from our BBC book club. Um, both of them have had experiences where they had to wean off from the game. Uh, I think Daniel went on like a bit of a holiday. He played less games. Raphael had to study. He's studying at the moment because of exams. Right. And uh, I had another client who had, who had to play. He played less games than his main because he's learning a second champ on his, on, on a second account, a Smurf. Right. In each of these scenarios, there are three differing reasons as to why you might regress on your main account, on your main champions, you're actually going to play worse. Now, when you when you actually then go on your main and you start to play worse and you drop, right? You drop. There's two responses. You can then hold on to that rank in your mind that you were at that level of play and constantly compare yourself to what you were in the past and just constantly like this toxic comparison. Absolutely. It eats away. It's it like, does. I was that. I could do that. I would have done that. Should have, could have, would have, you know? Or you can basically say to yourself, you know what? I've genuinely gotten worse. Yes, this is annoying. I know I'm better than this. I can know. I know I can be better than this. 
because I have been better than this in the past. It doesn't mean I am now, though. That's the important distinction to make. Just because, you know, you shouldn't feel entitled that you're always going to be improving at the game and you're not going to get worse. If you stop playing and you've had to take a detour or you've had a rough mental block or whatever the hell it might be, you can genuinely get worse at the game. So you must accept reality that temporarily you got worse, you've regressed, and the way to get back is now accept that you got worse. So right now, Nathan, you're saying how you're on a slippery slope right now, potentially getting worse at the game because of extenuating circumstances. This can turn into an extremely slippery slope if you don't accept reality. Like if you don't accept that you are worse than you were playing maybe three weeks ago and address what specifically changed and what you're doing differently and, and get into the details and you hold on to that like ideal of like what you were at, you're, that will just eat away at you. It does. And it can beat you up. It beats you down really, really badly. Over the last week, I it has continued to beat me down. I think I'm like... Four wins on the last one, 20, 20 games, four wins, 16 losses. Overcomplicating the shit out of things, right. going back to drafts, blaming bitter exile a little bit. Yeah. Just stuff that like I've done in the past that you just need to you just need to wake up. You need to wake up. And and accepting that you've gotten worse is yep. okay. Yeah. Otherwise you actually you will find it incredibly you sometimes actually won't yeah. get better. You're literally like you're just in this dark place. You're clawing at nothing, you know, versus just being like, all right, I'm just, yep. you know, this is just no, the you're, you're actually creating their own hole yourself. Yeah. That's the way I view it. Like yeah. you've actually created yeah, a hole to dig have. yourself out of rather than every, like, okay, I'll give you a very practical example. Let's say you were 700 LP, right? Mm. And that's where you're at. You come back from your break or whatever the hell happened, uh, meta shift, whatever. And you drop and say you lose eight games, whatever. And now you're say 550, Okay. Every game, what your default response is going to be, I am now 150 LP away from where, where, I, where, I, where, where I should be. Yep. So then when you win a game, you're like, yes, now I'm 135 LP away from where, where I was at. Or you lose again. Now I'm 165 LP from where I'm at. You're always comparing at an LP level and sometimes even at a level of play level where I was at, whether it's LP or level of play, it doesn't matter. Whereas every game should be, it's just as net zero. Zero. This is my level of play every single game, and this is my LP. But it's easier said than done, it's right? It's easier said than done. Yeah. yeah. And then that's why I definitely know where I get to. And I feel that sometimes, sometimes I tell myself, all right, it doesn't matter. Level of play, decision making, that's yep. it. Just don't even think about it. Just fuck the LP. You just got to not think and that's, about it. The, the, so my important. toolkit to deal with that right now, and what I said in the last episode, was get into the RE mastery. Yeah. The champ really mastery. Champ mastery is, I love it because it's such, such a, a great. It's like, a, it's like a way to detour that whole thing. Mm. It's like, it's just, I'm not even talking about that. It's like, let's just get into the decisions and the, into the champ mastery. I love that. All right. Um, anything else around that? So it's good. He developed his toolkit. Good. Yeah. And he has some other things, you know, and again, it's just really. He, he was going to have this experience. It was inevitable. Inevitable. That's right. That's right. Really now cool. he's had it. He can reflect on it, develop his toolkit. And now next time he's in this situation, he should be able to reflect back on this. What Daniel actually said to me after he had that experience, Daniel actually said he's actually writing down his thought process and his reflections off that. Rather, so he actually has like a, he's going to have like a document that he can refer back to. So next time he's in a similar situation, he can just refer back to what his thought process was and how he got out of it. Love it, which is interesting. You can revisit this because you will forget, even though you've done yep. it. You know, it's so good to write, writing things down is awesome. Yeah. It's like a little document. Read this when. Getting worse. Yeah, read this when read this when you think you're going on a loss streak. All right, next question here is from Katsutis. The title of this email is "Why should I watch my replays instead of high low players?" Hi guys, this has been bothering me for a while. My thinking is, why would I watch replays of a hard stuck diamond three player? There is a high chance I won't even be able to spot a misplay because it felt right when I was playing. So he saw, I think he's talking about himself. He's done. Okay. <laughs> That's not very good self-talk. No, no. I like, I feel like watching high low players and trying to understand the decision helps me more with understanding the game. For example, I was watching Caps play Siles versus Akali and it surprised me how he did not even once use E to gap close into W range. He would always hold his E and only use W if Akali walked into his range. The first time he used E offensively was at level seven when his team ganked Akali. I never thought about that matchup this way. I'll just try to EW her all the time. Another example, I was watching Bo play Echo. Um, 
red side. He did red Raptors Krugs, gank top, kill recall. I tried it in my in my game when I the enemy top had no TP and it worked perfectly. I'll never think about this path just watching my replay. I'd like to hear you guys' opinions on this. How much time should be spent watching my replays compared to higher low players? Okay. Um, it is a good question because you do need a balance between the two. You know, I think it really depends what you're looking to learn, in my opinion. And okay, so let's let's I guess start with why reviewing your own vods is important. Well, your situation is unique, right? Like when you view other vods, that's their situation, that's their game. Like y- y- their game based the level players they're versus in. Yeah, they're in a different server, a different rank. The game's different. The people are playing different. Like you're in. You- like you need to learn how to win in your elo in your server playing your champion right and and reviewing your vods and trying to break down the optimal decision um is going to lead to better results uh also i would say that uh remember when you're vod reviewing what he's talking about here is more like missed opportunities that's like a different type of learning so to really simplify it there's two types of learnings in in, in when you're vod reviewing there is identifying key mistakes, right? And and fixing key mistakes. These are generally quite easy. Everyone can usually spot key mistakes, right? Like I overstayed, I died to a gank, I misplayed that team fight, whatever it might be. Then another level of reviewing is missed opportunities and they, they're harder to see, right? Now, missed opportunities get easier to find the more, I guess, understanding of the champ you have and the more perspective you get. So if you're watching high elo games, you actually get, you'll find it easier to spot missed opportunities because you kind of know what is, what, what's capable, what that champion is capable of doing. So I think first things first, you need to address the key mistakes. And then once you've really covered those key mistakes then, and you're really trying to push your limits and go to the next level, that's where reviewing high elo games is great to get inspiration and find the, and fine tune the missed opportunities. If that makes sense. Do you have anything to comment there? I view it as two parts. So he's talking about things in terms of like new ideas. Let's mm-hmm. say if you're a jungler for pathing, yep. like that's very specific. Like the early game pass, that's actually like pretty much the only really thing you can really take right. away from higher levels apart from the champion mastery in terms of pathing. Okay. Champion mastery, that's the Carly Cups, you know, example. Yep. Um, again, like looking at new, like the ways you're playing that champion. Trading patterns. Okay. That's just a different sort of part of the well game. you don't know what you don't know as well right that's right like, like, yes yeah, learning some new things about learning the some new things like the, like learning trading patterns learning how to learn the matchup the reviewing your game should always be more way more important is because going back to the freak example mm. like the just the random like you're not going to see that but you, you can't you got to you got to be looking at those basic mistakes in your gameplay mm. because i would say this a lot of players have the knowledge to know about the basic mistakes look at the death the death's the most the first one we always recommend people say how do i review let's just get to your deaths Okay, what information did I miss? Learning about Throto Champions. Learning about, you know, thinking about item spikes and something. You know, all these, you could get look at all these things. Like, these are things that anyone could review. You know how you said that? We said that Freak could review this and be like, oh, this is, you know, bad. Mm-hmm. You've got to review your own gameplay to look at the level of basic mistakes you're making. It's so important. It's so important, that part. Yeah. I was going to say here as well, um, when, you're, when you're reviewing high low VODs, it almost feels like um, you. They're so. I was gonna say. I, had a, I actually forgot what I thought was. I had a really important point. Um, on, ba- basically, what I was gonna say was something along the lines of, um, in your own in your own vods. You need to know what you only you know what you were thinking, and that's right. Yes, yeah. the the thinking thing. That's right. Like yes. you know how you were thinking. Yeah. You don't really know how they were thinking in the high low vods, and it's the how you're thinking which is more important that's sometimes right. than the decision itself. Mm. So I, I, I a lot of the the coaching review. You know how you said before, like people need to be honest with themselves with mm. the decision making, mm. like. It's so important because you need to know what, how you were thinking in that moment. Because if you were thinking the wrong thought process, the play's always not going to work. The other thing as well is that uh, a lot of the the reasons you're not client, it's very rare that, okay, uh, what I was going to say was when you're watching high low VODs, they can show you what the champion is capable of and and all these things. But again, a lot of the time they're in differing situations. And that's what I really want to get across is like, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to review your own VODs 
if you have champ mastery and you understand the fundamentals of the game, like if you're- Especially as a diamond player. Especially as a diamond player. If you are curious and inquisitive and have champion mastery, you can reverse engineer the problems usually quite well if you are curious. Like you could go to a negative moment in the game. Even that just feels bad. Like even if you can't pinpoint it, it will feel bad. And you can kind of go back from that point. Like, why am I late here? Why did we lose this fight? Why did it feel like I'm always losing pressure? Like you can- Genu- generally deduce. Oh, the other, oh, the key point was um, watching high low vods is actually not very valuable unless you're looking for something specifically. That's my main point. So like when I watch high low vods, I'm generally looking for something specifically. If I'm watching, um, if I want to watch a, 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 learn a matchup, for example, I'm looking specifically for how they're playing the trades. What's the lane pace? How, how are they playing the waves? What's the itemization? How do I think they're thinking about the matchup? But I'm, 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 and I will get a lot from that because I'm looking for something specifically. If you're just randomly watching Bo play jungle or you're watching Chovy play this lane or whatever, and you're just, just observing, you're actually not getting much learning because you're not actively trying to learn something. Like you can watch the best basketballer, you know, do all this crazy shit. But if you, unless you're isolating, you're trying to look for something specifically, you're not going to get anything. So my biggest advice is like, yes, watching high low vods is important only if you're trying to learn something specifically. So the ultimate process is something goes like this. You look at your own VODs, you identify a problem. Maybe it's like, you don't know maybe when you should be grouping or splitting, or I feel like I'm always losing trades in this matchup, or I feel like I am struggling in team fights, whatever it might be. Then you go into the high low VODs and then you see what they're doing in similar situations. That's how you get the most learning. So in terms of ratio, it should still be like 80 to 20. 80 20, that's my in- yeah, initial thing. 80 to 20. There's so much information in your own gameplay. If you're able to look at it objectively, it, there's so much information. Yeah, it's unbelievable. that's what I was going to... That's the main point I wanted to get across. Yeah. So yeah, it's important, but it's not as important. Yeah, again, I view them as two different categories. That's like learning some new things, champ yeah. mastery stuff, specific path in things with that champion, and then just the meat of the positioning, the basic mistakes, the deaths, the, you know, the, the you know as you said, the... The freak was focusing at the beginning with like the one percenters, yeah, zero, but he needed to be going to the twenty percenters. Yeah. Get the twenty percenters out of the and way. And as first. a diamond player, you're making the twenty percent of yeah, his there's, all. There's, there's, there's a lot of twenty percent players in in diamond. That's yeah. for sure. All right, all right. Well, that's it for the mailbag episode. Short one for this part. Good work, guys. We'll see you in our next episode.